हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन दिस इज प्रोफेसर सिद्धार्थ सुराना आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग गुड और मैं तो हमेशा मस्ती रहता हूं वेलकम टू एपिसोड नंबर एट ऑफ रिविजन कम अमेंडमेंट्स फॉर मे 22 एंड नवंबर 22 एग्जाम्स दैट इज प्रीवियस ईयर 21 22 एंड असेसमेंट ईयर 22 23 इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैड स्टार्टेड वॉल्यूम थ्री ऑफ अवर सिलेबस विच वी कवर्ड इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी ऑलरेडी and now we are continuing with volume 3 very little is left in our syllabus and from now onwards whatever revision will be done that will be relevant for both intermediate as well as final students so moving on in our syllabus next chapter that we have is chapter number 34 income from house property they say house property but they cover if you observe the charging section 22 it says property of all kinds so whether you are earning rent from residential property or commercial property rental income will be taxable Here, income will be chargeable under this section 22 charging section for a house property only if three conditions are satisfied so for salary there is only one condition employer employee relationship but for house property first there has to be a property property means there has to be a building along with building there may be land there may not be land but building is compulsory only a vacant land will not come here it can go in pgbp if regular or ifos if not regular but it will not come here assessee has to be owner of the property he can be legal owner or deemed owner but assessee has to be the owner only if you are the owner of the property this section will be activated this head will be triggered if you are not the owner if it's a case of subletting then it will go under ifos and you should not be using the property for your own business it is possible that 3 days you give on rent and 3 days you do your own business then such rent will not be covered here so building owner not doing business three conditions fulfilled income will be taxable under house property if there is a vacant land as already told you without building it will be pgbp ifos it will not come in very important the income that you will earn is rent from your tenant but what you will pay tax on is not the rent you will pay tax on the annual value the capacity of the land or the building not the land but the building to generate income the taxable income is going to be the capacity of the building not the actual rent but the capacity because of the combination of check cash possibility under immovable properties because of the previous point the next point gets triggered that properties will be divided in three categories any property used for own residence throughout the year then it will have capacity but for tax purposes we will take zero that will be called a self occupied property but under this category you can classify maximum two if you have more than two it will be more than two after two sop after two sop everything will go in deemed to be let out so the middle category is very easy if you give your property on rent even for one day that will be let out property that topic is over supposingly you have 10 properties out of that four you have given on rent even for one day during the year you have given on rent that will become let out property you have to pay tax topic is over now let's talk about the remaining six you have not given them on rent at all so you can take sop benefit that is annual value equal to zero but maximum to any two of your choice of course so wherever the annual value is high we will take any two and the remaining four will be deemed to be let out property you can take maximum to under sop balance will go under dlop and if the property is held in stock in trade then initially dlop provisions will not get affected but after two years from the end of the year of cc completion certificate received from municipal corporation so you receive cc end of that year and two years after that even stock in trade developers who are not selling their property even stock in trade will be treated as deemed to be let out property rent from property will always be house property even if you make it your regular activity it will be taxable under house property but in our case law lecture which will be provided to all the students who have taken full course and crash course once uh, the circulars are out we will be conducting a case law lecture in that we will be discussing this case where supreme court said that if the company was created i'll tell you in short in the revision lecture this discussion is done with the full course and crash course students that if the company is created only for the purpose of investing in property and giving it on rent then in that case we will allow that company to classify it under pgbp if the only business only purpose of the company is rental income then you are allowed to classify under pgbp and then we also have another case law raj dadarkar where rent is just one of the activities your multiple businesses then you will have to put it under house property so the case law discussion will happen in case law class in general the rule is rent will always go under house property but if you create company only for this purpose then you can put it under pgbp if you get composite rent house property and other assets total rent 
check whether the two lettings are separable or not separable. If they are separable, then the rent of house will go under house property. Other assets depends. If it is regular, then PGBP, no, otherwise IFOs. But they can't go under house property. Other assets cannot come. For house property, there has to be building, only building rent. But when they are not separable, it is one total rent, like a hotel or anything like that, then it cannot go under house property because house property can cover only rent of building. If the total amount contains rent of other assets, then it will either go in business if it is regular activity like a hotel or if you supposingly have a bungalow in any hill station and you give it on rent once in a while, then income from other sources. How will income be computed? Biggest calculation GAV maximum time is consumed in this. Then municipal taxes cut deduction you will get only if paid, unpaid not allowed. Paid by tenant not allowed, only if paid by landlord, paid by landlord. You get NAV from which you get standard deduction at 30% of NAV. You get deduction of interest expense if the property was acquired out of borrowed capital and that's it. You will get your income from house property. GAV calculation is the biggest calculation. We will start with municipal value which is the value according to local authority given to you. Then we will be having fair rent various factors and the capacity we will find out. That will also be given. Expected rent will be municipal valuation or fair rent whichever is higher. So municipal valuation given, fair rent given, expected rent whichever is higher. Standard rent if applicable, it depends from state to state. If applicable, take standard rent and then you will get something called ALV, RLV. The value according to income tax which will be expected rent or standard rent whichever is lower. So municipal valuation or fair rent whichever is higher will become expected rent and then expected rent or standard rent whichever is lower will become ALV. Now you find out actual rent. The actual rent receivable from your tenant and if you fulfill these conditions that the tenancy is bona fide, the defaulting tenant has vacated your property, he does not occupy any other property, you take action, legal action to recover, then you get deduction of unrealized rent and you can take actual rent received. So actual rent you have to take, received or receivable. If these conditions are fulfilled, then give deduction and take received rent. If the conditions are not fulfilled, don't give deduction and get receivable rent. And finally, out of these two, out of these two, ALV or actual whichever is higher, ALV or actual whichever is higher, actual can be received or receivable based on condition, whichever is higher will be your GAV, ALV or actual whichever is higher. But in case there is any vacancy, there may not be a tenant all throughout the year. Then in this rent, add the vacancy period, rent only for comparison purposes. So comparison will happen between E and G because this is a 12 month figure. We have to make this also 12 month. Comparison will happen between these two figures. If G is higher, that means you have to take F as GAV. And if E is higher, then E will be GAV. GAV will be between E and F. G will never become GAV. It is done only for comparison purposes. Only for comparison purposes. If after adding vacancy rent, this amount is coming at a higher figure, that means it is because of the vacancy that the actual is less. Then we will take actual as the GAV. And if after adding also, the ALV is higher, that means your ALV only will become GAV. So if E is greater than G then E will become GAV and E is less than equal to then F will become GAV will be between E and F. G is being done only for comparison purposes. Conditions for deduction of unrealized rent I already told you and when we are giving this uh, vacancy benefit it will cover only those months where the property could not be let out. It was locked. If for any part of a year you were staying inside the property then that will not be counted as vacancy period. Vacancy period is that period for which the property was locked. If you were staying, then it will not be treated as vacancy. After GAV, next step, municipal taxes, only if paid and landlord. Two things you need to remember and remember one more thing. If they give you in percentage, then apply on the municipal value. Municipal value is done only for finding out the property taxes. So, don't apply on GAV. You just subtract, you will get your NAV. But if it is SOP where we can take maximum two houses, NAV will be equal to zero. Standard deduction will be flat 30% of this NAV. So on your calculator directly do 30% and it will cover all expenses like repair, maintenance, etc. insurance. You won't get any separate deduction except municipal tax which is allowed over here and interest which is allowed over here. Except these two, all other expenses are covered in standard deduction, repairs, insurance, maintenance. Nothing will be allowed separately as a deduction. And finally, we come to interest deduction and in no time we are done. Interest will be allowed if house property is acquired out of borrowed money. So you have to be the owner, it can be with borrowed money. So interest expense will be allowed as a deduction on due basis. Municipal taxes only if paid, but interest on due basis, whether paid or unpaid, 
only simple interest will be allowed so compound interest not allowed if you pay outside india to a non resident and you don't deduct tds so just like the tds system because it is non resident then full interest will be disallowed it is non resident interest to non resident without tds fully disallowed very important point the loan should be taken for purchase construction repair renewal reconstruction only five purposes allowed only five purposes the usage of loan money should be for these five purposes otherwise your interest will be fully disallowed if you take a loan to repay this loan so you take a loan for these purposes allowed then you want to change your bank so you take another loan and you repay this loan so that second interest will also be allowed in case this is important to know lop dlop full actual interest deduction will be allowed no limit no limit because you are showing income in lop you are showing income dlop you are don't have income still you are showing income you are paying tax on annual value but in sop maximum deduction will be 30000 that also in old regime let me remind you in new regime sop interest is not allowed in new regime lop interest is allowed sop is not allowed so maximum 30000 actual or 30000 whichever is lower but if you fulfill three conditions what loan after 1 for 1999 for purchase or construction not the other three purposes repair renewal reconstruction and the construction is completed within 5 years from the end of the year of loan then the maximum limit will increase from 30000 to 2 lakh so your calculation will be in lop unlimited whatever is the interest allowed lop d lop fully allowed in sop actual or 30000 whichever is lower actual or 30000 whichever is lower and if three conditions are fulfilled 1 2 and 3 on or after 1 for 1999 purchase or construction and within 5 years you complete construction then it will be actual or 2 lakh whichever is lower actual or 2 lakh whichever is lower so the limit of 30000 will be increased to limit of 2 lakh and this limit is applicable only under sop other general points of the chapter if you let out your property for some period and it is self occupied for some period it will be treated as lop because we already have studied one day also you give on rent it will be treated as lop if two people jointly own a property calculate the income of the property gav municipal tax nav standard deduction and all and that final income will be divided in the ratio of ownership in the ratio of ownership it will be divided if there is any interest of the pre construction period say you took a loan in this year and construction got completed here so this interest you will be allowed on the current year due basis but what about the interest prior to the construction we call it pre construction interest you will get deduction 1/5 for 5 years so you take this total divide by 5 and 1/5 20% you will get for 5 years so full will be allowed but not at one go in five installments starting from year of completion so from year of completion you will have current year interest also and you will have 1/5 current year and 1/5 till 5 years you will have current year 1/5 current year 1/5 current year 1/5 from the 6th year onwards you will have current year of course till the loan is repaid you will be having current year interest for lop dlop the total current year plus 1/5 the total unlimited but for sop the limit of 30000 or 2 lakh as applicable will be on the total so you don't get 2 lakh separate for the current year and 2 lakh separate for the pre construction total current year plus 1/5 total limited to 30000 or 2 lakh whichever is the applicable limit whichever is the applicable limit and how will you compute the period pre construction period starting from the date you take the loan and ending on either you repay the loan then there is no interest on you or before completion whichever is the last 31st march before completion of construction last 31st march so if you complete your construction on in the month of may june july august even 31st march you complete then this year you will get interest as current year till last 31st march will be your pre construction period and last concept if there is any recovery of arrears or unrealized rent arrears so past year there was unrealized rent and now it is recovered or past year there was nothing unrealized but your past tenant wants to give you something extra due to reworking of your rent agreement so you are recovering any extra rent for past year about which you had no idea in the earlier year then that will be recover that will be taxable in the year of recovery same treatment for both recovery of unrealized rent as well as arrears will be taxable in the year of recovery even if you are not the owner now now you may not be the owner but the year to which the rent pertains you were the owner so it will be taxable and we will give you a 30% standard deduction so if you get 1 lakh 70 will be taxable if you get 2 lakh 140 will be taxable 30% standard deduction will be given so recovery of unrealized and arrears of rent will be taxable in the year of recovery but we will grant you a standard deduction of 30% that's our chapter income from house property let's continue and start with the all important chapter 
नेक्स्ट चैप्टर प्रॉफिट्स एंड गेन्स ऑफ बिजनेस और प्रोफेशन चार्जिंग सेक्शन 28 विच सेज दैट प्रॉफिट्स एंड गेन्स फ्रॉम बिजनेस और प्रोफेशन दैट इज सेल ऑफ गुड्स और सर्विसेज एंड व्हेन वी से प्रॉफिट्स दैट मींस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट नेट प्रॉफिट सेल्स माइनस ऑल एक्सपेंसेस सेल्स माइनस ऑल एक्सपेंसेस द नेट प्रॉफिट ऑफ अ बिजनेस और प्रोफेशन विल बी चार्जेबल टू टैक्स द नेट प्रॉफिट ऑफ अ बिजनेस और प्रोफेशन विल बी chargeable to tax and how will we compute we will start with the net profit as per profit and loss account that pnl account can have errors due to wrong entries by assessee and this chapter is all about rectifying the errors whatever is the account to make it in accordance with taxation so if there is any expense which is debited but you are not allowed to take deduction disallowed expense then you will have to add it back any income which is not credited but you have to pay tax on it then you will have to add it back so these are the two additions and on the less side expenses which you have forgotten to debit not debited but they are allowed as a deduction then now you less it and incomes which you have written on the credit side but they are not taxable this can be because they are taxable under other head or this can be because they are exempt income income which is credited but not taxable then you less it so two items on the add side two items on the less side and you will get your pgbp there is a trick to solve pgbp sums and get the best out of PJBP that every time you come across any amount in the question, just check whether the amount is income or expense. For that, you need your common sense. After checking that, check what SSC has done in accounts. The accounts will always, always, always be given. For income, it can be credited or not credited. For expense, it can be debited or not debited. And then finally, go and check what is the treatment in tax. If it is related to business, then it will be taxable. if it is not related to business other heads or exempt then it will not be taxable and for expense this is the only thing that you have to learn from section 30 to section 37 one allowed expenses and then from section 37 2b to section 43b disallowed expenses you have to learn expenses which are allowed expenses which are disallowed and finally you will get four possibilities for income and four for expense income which is credited and taxable correct treatment no effect credited and not taxable so you have added it you less it not credited and taxable you have to bring it so you add it not credited not taxable no effect likewise expenses which are debited and allowed correct treatment no effect not debited disallowed correct treatment no effect debited and disallowed is wrong debit so add and not debited and allowed so you forgot so you less every time you have any amount in pgbp sum the only trick to get marks is add less no effect add less no effect if you follow this system of three steps for easy adjustments also the difficult will become very easy i assure you you just go one amount of one adjustment at a time add less no effect income or expense treatment in account treatment in tax find out whether it falls in which of the four possibilities decide add less no effect and you get your marks that's how easy it is just follow the trick but for that of course you will have to learn allowed expense and disallowed expense section 30 rent rate taxes repairs and insurance premium of building it can be full building or part building and the building should be used for business or profession rent rate taxes repairs and insurance premium of building building should be used for business or profession then you will get the deduction of all these expenses but of course if the repairs are of capital nature then you don't get the deduction as revenue expense you can take depreciation repairs and insurance of plant and machinery and furniture again only one condition business profession then allowed as a deduction under section 31 but observe carefully your rent is covered but your rent is not covered so it is not allowed under 30 and 31 later on we are all aware now this is a revision lecture so we are aware that later on it will be allowed under 371 depreciation one of the biggest and the most important section that whenever an asset is owned and used for business owned and used owned and used owned and used two conditions and you can take deduction of depreciation in own you can pay full payment and own or you can make only down payment higher purchase is also covered and in use whether you actively use or you keep ready for use passive use spare machinery for example active use or passive use both are going to be eligible so owned and used owned and used owned and used and we will get the deduction of depreciation two conditions and you get deduction of depreciation on tangible assets whether building plant machinery furniture or intangible asset patent trademark copyright all assets but no depreciation on land even on accounts we don't in accounts we don't charge because land is an appreciating asset there is no depreciation cars imported before 31st march 
no depreciation. If it was imported on or after 1401, then only you will be eligible. So, up to 31st March 2001, if the car was imported, no depreciation. If you make payment greater than 10,000 to the same person on the same day, same as 40A3, you have to make three allowable modes. Otherwise, that amount will be ineligible. So, that much amount will never get added in your block and thus there will be no depreciation on that particular asset. Depreciation deduction is compulsory. You cannot delay or postpone. If you are eligible, you have to take it. Otherwise, people will, when they are into losses, they will not take depreciation. Then in future, when there are more profits, then they will start taking depreciation. So, depreciation deduction is compulsory. Depreciation has to be charged. Very important on the WDV in the block asset method. We all know that individual asset will have no identity. It will add and become a part of the common value of the block and depreciation will be charged on the block of the asset. Asset purchased during the year and used for less than 180 days. Both conditions have to be satisfied. Purchased during the year and used for less than 180 days. So, if you purchase and use for more than 180, then full depreciation. If you purchase and you don't use at all, then you have not fulfilled this condition only. No depreciation. Next year, you use it whether more than 180 or less than 180. Full depreciation because for half rate, both conditions have to be fulfilled in the same year. So, be careful. There have been cases where institute tested this. Asset purchase in year 1, used from year 2, less than 180 days. In year 2, it will be full depreciation because for half rate, both both events should take place in the same year. If there is any amalgamation, then between the predecessor and successor, we will charge depreciation in the ratio of number of days. In income tax, WDV block asset method is compulsory. But if you are, if you are an assessee who is a manufacturer, manufacturer, or you are in the business of generation and distribution of power, and you purchase new plant and machinery, observe new that means second hand not allowed and building furniture other assets not allowed then you will get additional depreciation as 20 percent of the cost of your new asset in the year of acquisition and installation and of course if purchased during the year and used for less than 180 days then it will be half rate that is 10 percent of your cost but you can take the other half in the very next following year so listen wdv block asset method is compulsory for everyone for your normal depreciation Plus, we will give additional depreciation if you are manufacturing anything or generation of power is also manufacture of power only. So, what are the conditions to get additional depreciation? Manufacturer, new plant and machinery and it has to be eligible. There are some ineligible assets given. If these conditions are fulfilled, then you get depreciation. Normal depreciation on plant and machinery is 15, but this will be 20. Normal depreciation is on the block, but this will be on the cost. Normal depreciation you get every year. This you get only once in the year of purchase and installation but if you are not able to take full then the other half you can take in the next year which assets are not eligible for additional depreciation ships and aircraft any asset which was used outside india outside india any asset which is installed in office premises or residential accommodation because they are not used for manufacturing purposes any office appliances or vehicle or motor car or anything like that any plant and machinery of which 100 percent cost you have already taken as deduction maybe because of section 35 or 35 80 then those assets of course will not be eligible because already full cost you have taken full cost you have taken how do you decide cost of any asset of course all expenses before using the asset for the first time plus if there is any interest on borrowed capital based on accounting standard also if you borrow any money for acquiring an asset then the interest due before using the asset for the first time will also be capitalized all admin expenses of that period will also be capitalized and minus if there is any subsidy or grant received from the government specifically related to this asset then that is how we will find out the cost of the asset which will be taken in our block in the block of assets is slm asset slm method allowed in income tax yes only for power generation business it will be allowed only for tangible and that it will be optional only power generation only tangible optional and option once taken cannot be changed only power generation only tangible assets and optional option once taken cannot be changed and we have this example for that we have taken for power generation the same example we do in class also in the full course as well as the crash course so you can read through the example or you can take screenshot those who are not buying the book i suggest that you do it but it is not compulsory okay i don't i don't belong to that category you will force students that you take my book or take my lectures if you think you are comfortable you take it but i am anyways helping you you can take the screenshots by pausing the 
video and this example you can read through you will understand okay and basically the summary is that if you sell your asset which is falling in the slm depreciation only power generation only tangible and optional then if the selling price is less than wdv the difference will be terminal depreciation allowed as a deduction if it is more than wdv then up to the original cost it will be taxable as pgbp called balancing charge and more than the original cost will be taxable under capital gains now block asset method block asset method under this method oh, and this is compulsory for everyone all business or profession this is compulsory for intangible asset of power generation and for tangible also they can come your option once taken cannot be changed all similar assets shall be merged to form a block and depreciation shall be calculated on the block not on the value of an individual asset depreciation will be calculated not on the value of an individual asset but on the value of the block how will you compute the value of the block we will take opening wdv of the block we will add any asset purchased during the year less any asset sold during the year which will give us the qualifying amount for depreciation from that if we subtract the depreciation deduction based on the calculation on this amount we will calculate the depreciation at the rate which is prescribed for the respective block all the blocks have rates and you will get the wdv at the end of the year an individual asset has got no identity once it enters the common value in the block and thus there will be no capital gain or loss on the sale of any individual asset the gain or loss will be automatically adjusted if the sales is high this will be low so less depreciation if the sales is less this will be high so more depreciation the gain or loss will be automatically adjusted in the amount of depreciation as long as the block is in existence that means we have positive quantity and positive amount as long as the block is in existence then we will adjust it in the amount of depreciation and we will not calculate any gain or loss not calculate any gain or loss gain or loss will arise only if either the sale consideration is more than the value in the block then that will become short term capital gain or if all the assets are sold then there is no asset in the block then there will be gain or loss if the selling price is less then it will be short term capital loss and if the selling price is more then it will be short term capital gain individual asset has got no identity and thus in the block it will be always short term never long term always short term never long term one doubt which students have they have never bothered to ask anybody not their intermediate uh, tax sir or anyone sir why under depreciable assets block asset why do we have this system of always short term never long term what is the whole logic or idea behind this understand please this block is i am explaining the logic in the revision lecture actually there is no requirement of going into conceptual learning or logic or anything like that this is only revision lecture but for the benefit of those students who watch only my revision lectures and unfortunately have bad luck your bad luck your bad luck that you have not been a part of my full course or crash course then you don't know the logic the concept you have been just mechanically trained to go give the exam without conceptual learning so i just want to show how logic works and what you missed by not enrolling for any of the other courses understand please this block is an activity that we are doing as a part of our business buying asset selling asset as based on the business requirement so whatever gain or loss we get on the block when all assets are sold there can be gain or loss when some assets are sold at higher price there can be only gain there cannot be loss it is a part of my business activity and thus this gain or loss if there is any gain it should be taxable at the rate which is applicable for business profits because it is capital asset for classification we are putting it under capital gains head so we are not showing it as business income we are showing it as capital gain because it is capital asset but no one can deny the fact that this activity was done as a part of our business so what we will do is we will classify under capital gain because it is capital asset but apply the tax rate of business profession because it is capital asset so classify if for showing heads of income salary house property pgbp we will classify under capital gain but apply rate of tax of business and now understand business profit is taxed at normal rates short term capital gain is also taxed at normal rates there is only one short term which has special rate that is stock market 111a other than that short term is always taxed at normal rate special rate is for long term capital gains that means can i say this short term capital gain and pgbp income tax rate is same the rate of tax applicable 
for business profession is normal income tax rate the rate of tax applicable for short term capital gain is normal income tax rate short term capital gain and pgbp are taxed at same rate short term capital gain and pgbp are taxed at same rate yes or no if we put it under long term capital gain then special rate will apply and the rate applicable will be different from pgbp we want to classify under capital gain but tax it at the rate of pgbp and keeping that in mind the the deeming concept of always short term never never long term okay to give you an example of how capital gain can arise this is our opening wdv and purchases if the sales is more than the value in the block so you are getting negative so you can subtract maximum 13 lakh this will be zero when the amount in the block is zero then you will have to calculate sale consideration will be the amount that you sold for this amount and cost of acquisition will be the value in the block before the sale took place this total 13 lakh and this 2 lakh will be your short term capital gain and when all the assets are sold now all the assets can be sold at lower price or higher price higher price is same as the previous case the 2 lakh will be capital gain but if it is a lower price then it will be a short term capital loss when all assets are sold it can be gain or loss both but when some assets are sold it can only be a capital gain it cannot be a capital loss if if some assets are sold it can only be a gain because if it was sold for a lower price that means we have quantity as well as amount so there is no calculation of gain or loss depreciation will adjust and one small amendment which has come in the budget of 21 which is applicable for your exam but they said that we will apply it immediately she said auntie said that i am bringing this amendment and immediately apply it that any goodwill of business profession we will not get depreciation till now we had some supreme court rulings which said that smith security to be exact goodwill purchase if purchase then it will be see sell generated ka cost is zero and if cost is zero there is no question of any depreciation but in case there is purchased goodwill in case there is purchased goodwill so there is cost you add it in intangible asset block and you were claiming depreciation thereon but from now onwards goodwill shall be ineligible for any depreciation deduction goodwill shall be ineligible and in case any goodwill is a part of the block so whatever depreciation you have calculated that much part of goodwill we will remove we will see assume that five years ago you had purchased goodwill of five lakh rupees so you must have charged depreciation by adding in the block in the block there must be other assets also so abhi see goodwill we purchased for five lakh block had other assets of 10 lakh so then five years ago we started charging depreciation on 15 and every year we are charging wdv wdv today we have one wdv of this total we don't have individual asset identity because that is block asset matter and now from today's wdv we have to remove goodwill because from now onwards you are not allowed so what we will do is we will take the original cost of goodwill five years ago assume that it was the only asset in the block charge depreciation for five years on wdv method and after that what is the present wdv of goodwill subtract from the present day value of the block and the balance block shall now be eligible for depreciation but that reduction of course shall not exceed the wdv of the block that reduction shall not exceed the wdv of the block let me let me give you a proper example so that you get a little better understanding okay supposingly five years ago we had opening wdv intangible asset intangible asset block 25 percent block we had opening wdv 15 lakh rupees this year we purchased goodwill abhi five years ago goodwill was eligible for depreciation the rule is changing from this year so five lakh rupees so the 20 lakh rupees assume there is no sales 20 will become your qualifying amount assume more than 180 days so we will charge depreciation 25 percent 5 lakh 25 is 5 lakh only no? we get closing wdv 15 lakh rupees and now we continue for year 2 3 4 5 and after charging depreciation of 5 years whatever is our opening wdv this year there must be some opening WDV this year. There must be some purchases this year. There must be some sales this year. Opening plus purchase minus sales will give us the qualifying amount for this year. Normal circumstances, we would have directly applied the 25% rate of block on the qualifying amount. 
and charge depreciation or if there is any half rate so we have to separate it we know that but now before charging the depreciation we have to subtract any goodwill in the block we know there is goodwill in the block which was originally acquired for 5 lakh rupees and now it's a part of this value we don't have identity in the block no once it enters so we will have to make a compromise how will we do that compromise take the original cost of goodwill what was the original cost of goodwill 5 lakh minus depreciation for year 1 so wdv at end of year 1 minus depreciation of year 2 so you get wdv at end of year 2 minus year 3 minus year 4 minus year 5 then you will get wdv today do this do this for 5 years wdv today that wdv you subtract but maximum that you subtract will be value in the block you cannot make it negative possible no over the years you have made sales so the value in the block has now reduced drastically so that wdv you will subtract and this final qualifying amount will be eligible any goodwill present in the block will be removed by this calculation take original cost assume goodwill was the only asset in the block charge depreciation notional depreciation over the years bring the present value of goodwill and subtract it from today's value in the block but the amount subtracted cannot exceed the amount subtracted cannot exceed the value in the block and thus the goodwill is now removed from the block it will be ineligible for depreciation now onwards you purchase any new goodwill it will not get added only whatever is already added we are removing if you purchase new it will not get added only but yes whenever you sell your goodwill then in capital gains you can take cost of acquisition in capital gain it, it will become like a capital asset non-depreciable capital asset just like land goodwill also become a, will also become a non-depreciable capital asset next 33 ab aba less important provisions inter though it is not applicable only if you have and of course for these provisions all you are required to do is there are a few mcqs in our book if you solve the mcqs of 33 ab and aba from our book then that much is enough you can just read once and solve the mcqs it is enough so for anybody in the tea coffee and rubber business you have to transfer an amount in a special account with national bank for agriculture and rural development within six months from the end of the previous year or on or before the due date of return of income whichever is earlier if you do that transfer to that special account then you will get a deduction actual amount transferred or 40 percent of profit from the business 40 percent of profit or actual amount transferred whichever is lower after taking that deduction you will get the final income and don't forget that in tea coffee rubber after you get that final income a portion of that final income is treated as agriculture income in tea business 60 percent is agriculture in rubber business 65 percent is agriculture in coffee business there are two options it can be 60 percent or 75 percent if you are doing only basic activities then it will be 75 percent agriculture and if you are mixing flavors if you are uh, roasting or grounding if you are doing all those additional activities then only 60 percent will be agriculture we are very distinctly aware of that the deduction will be available for all assesses and ca report is going to be required similar to 33 ab that is 33 aba this is site restoration fund you have to deposit an account in an account with sbi year you will be maintaining on or before the end of the previous year then here you will get deduction of actual amount deposited or 20 percent of profit so in tea coffee rubber section it is amount deposited or 40 percent of profits and here it is amount deposited or 20 percent of profits there you have to deposit within six months or before due date of return whichever is earlier here you have to deposit before the end of the previous year then all other conditions are same this takes us to expenditure on scientific research one of the important provisions but good thing is now all the deductions have become 100 percent so there is nothing called weighted deduction here very simple simple and before i start this i would like to remind you one thing additional depreciation that we studied is not allowed in new regime 33 ab 33 aba not allowed in new regime in scientific research these are the only two there are total seven but these two are allowed in new regime 115 b double a b a b allowed in new regime b a c b a d allowed in new regime there are five more which are not allowed five more in section 35 which are allowed in old regime not allowed in new regime out of that five one is applicable only to company so in 115 b double a b a b which is for company they mentioned five not allowed 35 12 35 13 35 12 a 35 2 double a 35 2 a b five not allowed 
and in 115 BAC BAD they have only said four not allowed because fifth is not applicable on this. Or you may conclude like this in new regime these two will be allowed 35 1 1 and 35 to anything other than this whichever is applicable for companies five applicable new regime all not allowed for individual HF four applicable new regime not allowed only these two will be allowed. So revenue expenditure for own business of scientific research including expenditure incurred three years before the commencement of business 100 percent deduction revenue expenditure own business scientific research including three years pre commencement 100 percent deduction capital expenditure on own business including three years before commencement of business 100 percent deduction so in conclusion revenue or capital current year or last three years if it is for own business own business and it is scientific research 100 percent deduction of course if you take this you don't get other deductions like depreciation and all in capital expense land will not be allowed land not allowed of course land there is no deduction anywhere in the law and for both revenue and capital in the pre-commencement deduction are we giving deduction of pre-commencement yes three years maximum if there is any percussive provided to employees in that period it will not be allowed we are giving deduction but if there is any percussive provided to employees that will not be allowed next 35 1 2 1 3 any contribution to any research association university etc which is approved research association college institution university if it is for scientific research then 35 1 2 is applicable if it is for social science and statistical research 35 1 3 is applicable now everywhere you get 100 percent deduction 35 2 a b any expenditure incurred by indian company this is that only provision which is for company and thus mentioned in b a b a b not mentioned in b a c b a b for in-house scientific research in agreement with the central government then 100 percent deduction of all capital and revenue expenditure but if this deduction is taken then you will of course not get any other deduction you won't get deduction on land and building over here but for building because it is own business you can take here here only land is not allowed so in short land zero deduction other expenses 100 percent deduction building not allowed here but you can take in the above section 100 percent deduction you will get so building you can take 35 2 then if i am making contribution to this company contribution to an indian company and i can be anyone i can be individual hof this can be anyone but the receiver whom i am making contribution to to a company for scientific research and development then 100 percent paid will be allowed but the company cannot take 35 2 ab if i pay this i will get deduction company will not get 35 2 ab and this is where we were taught in the penalties and the fees chapter that the receiver the research association the college association university institution the company in fact for atg charitable trust also they have to furnish a statement with prescribed details of donors so if they give us details of donors in the donors income tax return automatically we will show the deduction if there is failure then there will be penalty minimum 10000 maximum 1 lakh and there will also be fees of 200 rupees per day but the fees cannot exceed the amount in default and in 35 2 double a which is also not allowed in new regime contribution to national laboratory iit or university for approved scientific research then here also we get 100 percent deduction after contribution if the approval is cancelled the deduction is still going to be available next couple of provisions which are again not applicable for inter applicable only for fine of course see if there is any inter student watching this lecture which section is applicable not applicable i have already cancelled and i have given that to you so that part you can ignore and all other sections are applicable only okay so i will again and again not repeat what is applicable to inter and final 35 a b b expenditure on telecom license and expenditure on scientific uh, spectrum fees is a b a a b b is telecom license and a b a is spectrum fees you will get deduction over the life of the spectrum or license cost divided by balance life balance because deduction starts with payment so if you make payment after two years your deduction will start from that year and end date will be the end of the license so we have to change the denominator and adjust accordingly if this deduction is taken of course no other deduction that means this intangible depreciation cannot be taken for example you take a 20 lakh license with 10 years life but you make payment in installments 10 lakh 9 lakh and 1 lakh so in the first year 1920 you will get only 10 lakh cut deduction and that also apportioned over the life so only 1 lakh but this now you will get every year so next year this 1 lakh is fixed plus you made another 9 lakh payment now it has to be spread over 9 years because we have to stop at the end of the license so that will make 1 lakh plus 1 lakh 2 lakh now this 2 lakh is fixed now we made 
वन लैख डिवाइड वी मेड वन मोर वन लैख पेमेंट सो बैलेंस लाइफ इज एट ईयर बैलेंस लाइफ वी है एट ईयर बिकॉज वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम पेमेंट वी विल सी बैलेंस लाइफ सो दैट विल मेक इट टोटल ऑफ टू लैख ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड नाउ फॉर द रिमेनिंग ईयर्स एवरी ईयर इट विल बी टू लैख ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड टू लैख ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड सो सेवन ईयर्स इफ यू डू टू लैख ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इट विल बी फोर्टीन एटी सेवन फाइव हंड्रेड देन इफ यू एड दिस थ्री यू विल ऑब्जर्व दैट फुल डिडक्शन ऑफ ट्वेंटी लैक इज अलाउड ओवर द लाइफ ऑफ द लाइसेंस बट एज एंड वेन यू मेक पेमेंट योर इंस्टॉलमेंट स्टार्ट एंड दस वी हैव टू एडजस्ट अवर डिनोमिनेटर वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्शन अगेन 35 AD come and take deduction. Come and take deduction. Our deduction low AD. Our deduction low 100% deduction of capital expenditure for 14 specified business in old regime, not allowed in new regime. 100% deduction of capital expenditure. We will do what are those businesses, but before going to the businesses expenditure before what we get full deduction of capital expenditure. 100% to promote just like scientific research. What are the conditions before commencement also allowed expenditure. Before commencement of business will also be allowed. In scientific research, there is a time limit that will give you deduction of maximum three years. In scientific research, we give you deduction of maximum three years. Here there is no time limit, but you have to capitalize this expense in books of accounts at the time of commencement of business. If you claim this deduction, no other deduction. Again, our target is depreciation. Thirty-five AD is optional, not compulsory. But supposingly there is a person who is going in new regime, so he will not take thirty-five AD. then he can take depreciation there was an assessing officer who said that you are doing 35 ad so depreciation not allowed then whether you go in old regime or new regime depreciation not allowed are bola ye 35 ad i will take then only not allowed no if i don't take only then ao is saying no once you are in 35 ad then no depreciation 35 ad you take or you don't take are bak only if i take there will be no depreciation if i don't take then i will get depreciation deduction no deduction on land goodwill financial instrument land we already know goodwill financial instrument reason is that it should be a new business not take over of an existing business same conditions we have seen in 10 aa scz with example and maximum second and local local plant and machinery should be 20% of your total plant and machinery if there is any loss in specified business it can be adjusted only against any specified business profit you cannot adjust it against any business other business profit but loss of other business can be adjusted against specified profit specified loss only against specified profit if you want carry forward of loss then your return of income has to be filed on time loss carry forward will be given only if the return is filed on time and the loss can be carried forward for unlimited period for the same business you can take 35 ad or scz any one but i have already told you in that chapter also same as sc different businesses he can take both if you take 35 ad then the asset has to be used in this business for minimum 8 years if it is destroyed or demolished within Eight years, then whatever deduction you have taken, that's full cost, hundred percent minus the depreciation you must have foregone. See, if you sell after one year, that means you foregone one year depreciation. If you sell after two years, then two years foregone. Similar calculation to what we did for goodwill. Original cost minus the depreciation taken foregone till now. That net benefit that you have taken of thirty-five AD that will be added back and taxable under PGBP. And in case you shift this asset to another business, then in this business. the net benefit will get added and in that other business on that amount which you are adding in this business that can be taken as the cost of the asset for the purpose of taking depreciation deduction your books of accounts have to be audited then only the deduction will be allowed and finally what are the 14 businesses warehousing of agriculture business uh, agriculture produce production of fertilizer a hospital minimum 100 beds but that should be for patients i do realize when i made the book i was trying to make it very very uh interesting in this and when i was uh, doing these uh, image most places the image is very big and very big to tell you what is the meme and all but uh, in these businesses because i wanted the business one after the other so i decided to keep the image a little small but then the image became too small and thus now you focus on this i have realized this so next year whenever i will make the new book i am going to ensure that the images are enlarged even the smallest of images will be of big size so everything is visible let it consume a little more space in the book but i will ensure that they are big size but from next year on any ways you focus on the concept so hospital with minimum 100 beds for patient this is only one of that rare case where images are small if you observe major places in the book we have kept very large size images anyways and if you watch it on a device then it appears a little small and in the laptop or in your mobile you may not be able to see 
the image but if the physical hard copy of the book is with you the image is still clearly visible only cold chain facility affordable housing slum redevelopment inland container depot container freight station beekeeping honey making business warehousing of sugar sugar is not an agriculture product sugar cane is agriculture product so sugar is separately kept laying and operating across country petroleum and natural gas pipeline network whole world knows that this was done only for one person the owner of india hotel of two star and above category a slurry pipeline for transportation of iron ore semiconductor wafer fabrication unit and this last business is also only for company so out of 14 two businesses are only for company new infrastructure facility where you are developing or you are operating and maintaining or you are doing both also you can do only this only this or you can do both what is a new infrastructure facility a road including toll road bridge or rail system like metro monorail highway project including housing and other activities water treatment water management irrigation solid waste management sewerage system a port airport inland port inland waterway etc if you have developed any of these or someone else has developed you are maintaining or you have done both then you are going to be eligible next any payment for rural development or urban poverty eradication programs 100% deduction even if not related to your business because government wants to promote this any expenditure on agriculture extension 100% deduction of capital and revenue capital and revenue 100% deduction but not allowed in new regime so observe 115 bwa bab bsc bad everywhere it is mentioned not allowed in new regime not allowed in new regime it is mentioned 35 ccd expenditure on skill development project expenditure on skill development project 100% deduction again on all capital and revenue here they have mentioned excluding land and building so there will be a controversy sir what about here they have not mentioned because they have not mentioned you can take but i would still suggest land we are all aware nowhere we get any deduction but i will what i will suggest is that way they have not mentioned so you can say no sir i will take everything you take and fight with your it but to avoid fight i can suggest you don't take land take only building then ao will also not fight you can tell him sir land i am not taking common sense but the thing is mentioned so building i will take so your land and building will be excluded everything else 100% your not mentioned but building you can take i would recommend that avoid land and if you want to fight only with your you there are thousands and lakhs of case law so every day life income tax has got a lot of litigation and it is a little different from what income tax used to be for exam purposes we try to learn as much as possible but somewhere we have to stop draw a line and stop that this is what is relevant for exam this is what i am going to take seriously and this is what i am going to pay attention to so i am i i hope we are clear on what is at least happening as far as this is concerned and secondly if you observe new taxation regime of companies b w a b a b both these sections are mentioned not allowed in new regime not allowed in new regime but in b a c b a d individual h o f and resident cooperative society only this is mentioned go check only this is mentioned why this is not mentioned because this is only for company because this is only for company because this is only for company only this will be mention this is not applicable only in bac bad if you understand what is happening in short these two will not be allowed in new regime 35d preliminary expenses card deduction you have to learn this only for answering any mcq question if you incur any of these expenses then you will get deduction but not your full amount not your full amount we will first check for a non corporate assessy 5% of cost of project cost of project means the assets that you have acquired to start this business and for non corporate assessee we will check only that for corporate assessee we will take cost of project that is assets acquired for the business or capital employed that is equity share capital preference share capital any of that and as per a recent judgment of supreme court burger paint securities premium will not be taken so securities premium will not be taken for the purpose of capital employed in this section if you calculate capital employed in financial management sources of funds then your reserves and surplus have to go there your long term borrowings everything will go there long term borrowings will come here also it will go there okay what is the money invested but securities premium will not be taken as per supreme court judgment we will take whichever is higher now use your brain capital employed can come only for corporate assets so for non corporate only one answer 5% of cost of project for corporate assessee you take cost of project or capital employed excluding senior a securities premium out of the two whichever is higher uska you take 5% so cost of project or capital employed whichever is higher 5% and non corporate assessee or directly for cost of project 
and that amount you compare with actual amount actual expenses so 5% of cost of project or capital employed if applicable that is only for corporate assessee for non corporate it is only this much for corporate it is this much compare with actual preliminary expenses whichever is lower will become your qualifying amount and that will be allowed as a deduction one fifth over a period of five years one fifth over a period of five years that is 35d amortization of amalgamation expenses no limit one fifth deduction over a period of five years any payment that you make to your employees on voluntary retirement one fifth will be allowed again over a period of five years but this will be on payment basis so if you promise one lakh but you pay only forty thousand so on forty thousand we will apply one fifth and only eight thousand will be your deduction next year you pay the remaining sixty thousand so forty thousand ka one fifth is going on because that will be for five years plus sixty ka one fifth also will start here whenever you make payment your five years will start whenever you make payment your five years will start every payment one fifth every payment one fifth for five years that is how it is going to work section 36 one is one one line deduction you can read if time permits or quickly i will You're asking me a review of the app in the middle of the review it's pagal hai microsoft wale akkal ghas channe ko gaya review the app right now in the middle of my revision class <sighs> thug life one one line up, whatever we will take a brief run of this insurance premium of stock trade allowed as a deduction insurance premium on cattle paid by milk society of course that's a very important asset for them allowed as a deduction insurance premium of employees paid by employer allowed as a deduction bonus and commission allowed payment basis because it is covered as one of the payments of 43b we, would, we know what is 43b interest on loan borrowed and used for business and interest is payable loan borrowed used for business interest is payable then allowed as a deduction but following will not be allowed brokerage and commission for securing loan may not be allowed here but you can take in 37 1 interest outside india and no tds deduction of course we are aware that it will be disallowed interest on asset before using the asset for the first time that has to be capitalized and any amount borrowed to a non-taxable income so if i borrow money and do agriculture business i am not paying tax on that agriculture income then of course i will not get deduction on that interest expense goes without saying if there is any zero coupon bond for the investor it will be capital gain but for the company issuer company the difference between the issue price and redemption price is interest expense which we will apportion over the life of the zcb any employer contribution to recognized provident fund or superannuation fund will be allowed as a deduction employer contribution to provident fund which is up to 10 percent of a pension fund up to 10 percent of salary employer contribution to approved gratuity fund will be allowed as a deduction if you have used animals in your business when you acquire the animal no deduction but when you sell the animal it can be sale of old animal or sale of dead body then original cost minus selling price your net expense will be allowed as a deduction bad debts actual bad debts rdd is not allowed for normal businesses rdd is allowed only for banking business in the next clause only actual bad debts will be allowed if earlier you have paid tax so i show income i pay tax then it becomes bad debt i will be allowed as a deduction only by writing off i don't need to prove anything if i write off bad debts will be allowed and if later they are recovered then again bad debts recovered are taxable in the year of receipt rdd is allowed only for banking business for foreign bank 5% of GTI for public financial institution 5% of GTI for schedule bank non schedule bank cooperative bank 8.5% of GTI plus 10% of rural advances aggregate advances given by rural branches aggregate advances given by so 8.5% of GTI plus 10% of aggregate rural advances that will be the total deduction of schedule bank cooperative bank and NBFC also 5% so NBFC foreign bank and PFI 5% of income nbfc foreign bank and pfi five percent and for scheduled cooperative bank 8.5 percent of gti plus 10 percent of aggregate rural advances family planning expenses which are allowed only for mention this please allowed only for company other assesses will not be allowed revenue expenses fully allowed and capital expense in five installments one fifth if you pay any stt or ctt in course of business pay very careful attention stt or ctt paid in course of business so i am doing futures and options trading that's my speculation business if there is any stt on that i will be allowed as a deduction against my income. i have suffered losses only but in case there is any profit i will be allowed as a deduction stt ctt will be allowed as a deduction why am i again and again saying business business because it is possible that you are not doing trading you are an investor 
So at that time also you have to pay STTT, CTT. That income comes under capital gain. Under capital gain, you don't get deduction. STT, CTT allowed if business, not allowed if under capital gain. Sugar can purchase by cooperative society will be allowed. And mark to market losses, this is a concept which comes in final CA, financial management that there are mark to market losses. Then as per ICDS, it is going to be allowed as a deduction. Finally, we have a general deduction where we are tired of learning individual deductions. So general deduction, any expense which is not covered in the section till now, it is incurred wholly for the purpose of business, not capital in nature, not personal in nature, wholly for business means not personal, not prohibited under a law, then it is going to be allowed as a deduction. But any CSR expenditure under company side, not allowed. So purchases, salary to staff, telephone expense, electricity, rent of plant machinery furniture, which was not covered under 30 and 31, all these expenses will be allowed as a deduction in the general section 37. One with this, we finish the first part of the chapter that is expenses which are allowed. Let's then go ahead. Next part of the chapter expenses which will be disallowed one by one. Any kind of advertisement or donation or contribution to political party will be disallowed in PGBP. We are disallowing because we are going to give you chapter 6 here deduction it is GGB for companies, it is GGC for other assesses. 100% deduction will be given but only if the donation is in a non-cash mode. Only if the donation is in a mode other than cash, then 100% deduction of the donation will be allowed. So, in PGBP you will add whether check or cash. PGBP you add, 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 add and chapter 6 say if it is cash then don't allow otherwise you will allow. It's a fixed adjustment which comes for about 2 marks every exam. Next, for building plant machinery and furniture, if you are using combination, little business, little personal, then find out the proportion of personal and only that proportionate will be disallowed. Do not disallow the full amount, disallow only the proportion, building plant and machinery and furniture. Then comes 40 clause A, which has got multiple parts. So let's talk about one by one. Any kind of direct tax, paid, unpaid, accrued, anything, direct tax is not an expense, it is an appropriation. So whether it is income tax, foreign country, whether buyback tax, interest on income tax, tax paid by employer on behalf of the employee, which will be disallowed to the employer, not taxable for the employee. Any kind of direct tax will be disallowed. Part 2, any state government undertaking is making payment to the state government in the name of license fee, royalty, service fee, free relief fee, all that is going to be disallowed. And any TDS related non-compliance that we have already seen if the TDS is not deducted, or deducted but not paid up to the due date of 139.1. 1. If you miss the 7th of the next month, there will be interest. But if you miss 139.1 1 due date, the expense will be disallowed. If the pay is resident, then 30%. If the pay is non-resident, then 100%. And if this amount is paid to the government in a future year, then whatever is disallowed today, 30 or 100 respectively, will be allowed in that year. 40B, we have already seen the limit of remuneration and interest paid by firm to partners. So, no need to do it again. 40B, when AOP, BOI pays, anything interest remuneration anything to member it will be fully disallowed it is going to be fully disallowed but if it is acting in representative capacity for example a is member and interest is paid to a huf or mrs a then based on whether business requires or no subject to the other conditions it will be allowed if you make excessive payment to related parties for example 5 lakh salary to brother but an unrelated party i would have paid only 4 lakh then excess 1 lakh will be disallowed excess payment to related parties excess will be disallowed 40a3 is again something that you will find in almost every exam if you make payment more than 10,000 to same person same day same person same day then you have to make the payment in the three allowable modes that is account pay check account pay draft electronic modes if not then it will be fully disallowed if you make 10,000 and one rupee in cash full amount will get disallowed but if the pay is transporter the limit will be increased from 10,000 to 35,000. So, transporter you can pay cash up to 35,000 rupees. However, there are some exceptions prescribed in rule 6 double D exceptions to section 40A3 where certain payments can be made more than the limit 10 or 35 whatever is applicable and still that will be allowed even if you make in cash. That means cases where you can say 40A3 is not applicable only. 40A3 says what more than 10 or more than 35. Same person, same day in cash disallowed. But in these cases, that disallowance will not apply. In other words, you can say these few cases are cases where the expense will be allowed. What are the cases? Be careful. In MCQ, you can be tested. In subjective question also, you can be tested. They can say that cash payment more than 35,000 and they can give you 
any of these cases so you should remember that these cases it will be allowed more than 10 or more than 35 bank is closed if payment is made in a village where there is no bank village should have no bank if there is bank and i don't have account that is not allowed village should have no bank employee is being sent on a temporary posting which is more than 15 days temporary period two months three months but more than 15 see it is less than 15 days then he can come back and take his salary but if it is more than 15 days then he will ask for salary when he is at that temporary posting place and he may not have a bank account over there so at temporary posting you can pay payment made to banks or credit financial institution it is their responsibility to handle cash any payment made to government can be made in cash no problem any payment made through banking channel it may not be account pay check draft but it is through banking channel any payment made through book adjustment for example i take a loan from you and uh, i uh, give a loan to you and i make purchases from you and then i tell you that adjust the purchase amount against the loan i give a loan to you and then i make some purchases from you and i tell you to adjust it against the loan amount so i have not paid account pay check draft or electronic mode i am adjusting in the loan amount that is book entry adjustment allowed any payment made to agriculturist farmers immune from taxation so allowed any payment made to a uh, producer in cottage industry where goods are manufactured without the aid of power small scale industries then no problem allowed terminal benefits like retirement gratuity retirement uh, commuter pension and all that up to rupees 50000 then allowed any payment who is made which is made to an agent who is required to further pay in cash supposingly you are my purchase agent okay and i ask you to purchase from five shops 15000 each so i will give you 75000 and you will pay 15000 each so that payment which i make to you will not be considered because from the individual shopkeeper we are showing expense of 15000 each payment made to a dealer in foreign currency in normal course of business this much is going to be allowed these things even if more than 10000 or 35 in cash will be allowed other cases the expense will be disallowed whenever we contribute to employee benefit funds if they are approved funds they will be allowed if paid under 43b 43b means you can pay up to 139 and if they are unapproved funds they will be disallowed but if you make actual payment then it will be allowed so in short whether approved or unapproved if paid they will be allowed but the difference is for approved we get time up to return filing because it is 43b and here you have to pay till 31st march if you pay in april then the deduction will be allowed in the next year that is only the difference 43b again an important provision that certain deductions will be allowed only if you make payment even if you follow accrual system of accounting which you are allowed in pgbp but these expenses ka deduction you will not get to get the deduction of these expenses payment has to be made any kind of indirect taxes direct taxes are anyways disallowed this section is not river ganga that you can take your dip and wash your sins anything which is already disallowed is gone what is this section something which is allowed but if unpaid it will get disallowed so direct tax is always disallowed indirect tax is only if paid any employer contribution to approve benefit fund that is why we say here we have 43b but if there is employee contribution for example we deduct from employee salary uh, his contribution towards provident fund and we have to pay then that has to be deposited before the fund due date 43b is not relevant there are two contributions say i pay you 50000 salary this is an amendment so i am discussing i pay you 50000 salary and i pay 10000 in provident fund so that 10000 is over and above 50 that's employer contribution and 43b will be applicable but the amount that i deducted from your salary from 50 say i deducted 8000 rupees this i will deduct and pay in provident fund this is your contribution i am only acting on your behalf same as tds deduct and contribute so 10000 is employer contribution 8000 which i have deducted from your salary and i will pay in provident fund is employee contribution because i have deducted from your payment so 10000 employer contribution that has to be paid within the 43b due date and 8000 which i deduct from your salary we call it employee contribution that has to be paid before the due date under the provident fund law or the gratuity law before the fund due date then only it will be allowed 43b is applicable for employer contribution not applicable to employee contribution bonus and commission to employees employees so listen the catch here is salary to employees will be allowed even if unpaid commission to agent will be allowed on due basis even if unpaid this is only bonus commission not salary only employees not agent any interest payable to public financial institution schedule bank or cooperative bank only if paid any leave encashment to employees only if paid and any railway asset if you have used only if paid these expenses will be allowed only if paid and supposingly you pay in a future year current year unpaid then it will be 
disallowed. You have to make payment till not 31st March, but till 139 one due date. So, April to March, you make payment allowed. In the assessment year up to due date of return filing also, you make payment allowed. So, you can make payment till this date and it will be allowed. But if you don't make payment on this date, then your expense will get disallowed. Then you make payment in any of the future years. Any of the future years you make payment. Whichever year you make payment, it will be allowed. So, current year it will be disallowed, therefore add. And future year it will be allowed, therefore less. This is how we are going to give effect. Next, now we come to general rules and regulations about PGPP. So, that with that PGPP will almost get over once we do these general rules and regulations. So, compulsory maintenance of books of accounts. If you are in specified profession, CA, CS, lawyer, doctor, uh, film artist uh, or etc. Then we have to see your gross receipts of last three years. So, for 21-22, we will check 20-21, 19-20, If all the three exceed 150,000, all three exceed 150,000, okay, then you have to maintain compulsory books of accounts that is cash book, journal, ledger, trial balance, original expense bill, duplicate sales bill and a practicing doctor has to maintain case paper, daily case register and all that, okay. Daily case register and stock medicine, extra for practicing doctor and if if any one also is less than or equal to any one less than or equal to 150,000, then in that case, maintain any books of accounts that help the AO to compute entity. Maintain any books of accounts that help the AO to compute entity. Okay. And if we talk about other business or profession, only specified profession is covered here. So, all businesses, other profession. We will check six amounts last three years turnover and last three years profit last three years turnover and profit turnover and profit. So on the turnover we will apply the limit of 25 lakhs and on the profit we will apply the limit of 2 lakh 50 thousand. So three limits of 25 lakhs three limits of 2 lakh 50 thousand on the three turnovers of last three years 25 lakh limit will be applicable on the three profits of last three years 250 limit will be applicable and if any one of the six figures exceeds the limit anyone here what is the rule all exceed the limit then maintain these books anyone also exceed the limit then maintain any books of accounts that help AO to compute entity I. maintain any books of accounts that help AO to compute entity I. and if all the limits do not exceed then no need to maintain books of accounts that's that is the rule for maintenance of books of accounts now let's go to tax audit tax audit has to be done at least one month before the 139 one due date so 139 one has now changed to 31st october this will remain 30th September. Earlier, tax audit due date was return filing due date. So, both were September. But return filing was increased to October. So, here there was an amendment last year, one month before. So, this remains September. If you are in profession, the rule is very clear. Only one rule. For profession, if your gross receipts exceed 50 lakh, then tax audit is compulsory. Tax audit along with some of the presumptive taxation sections have been tested by ICAI in case study based MCQs. So, people are not able to answer only because their provisions are not clear and their practice of MCQs is not clear. Once these provisions become clear, you have revised them and you practice MCQs, we are going to cover 1800 MCQs in our season 3 for May 20 to November. And under all circumstances, we want to make sure that we get our marks. Okay. So, we are going to cover everything about more about MCQ. I will be speaking in the first lecture of MCQ. What is going to be my coverage? I will be talking about that for profession if the gross receipts exceed 50 lakh rupees only one rule for business it is one crore so business more than one crore profession 50 lakh and equal to there is no tax on it but for people who opt for 44 ad for business then it is two crore because for 44 ad the limit is up to two crore so if i cross one crore but i opt for presumptive i will not have books of accounts i cannot get an audit done so for profession the rule is very easy because Tax audit limit and presumptive limit is same. Presumptive limit is also 50 lakh. So, you cross 50 lakh, then tax audit compulsory, presumptive not allowed. And if you are up to 50 lakh, then presumptive is allowed and tax audit is not compulsory. But here, tax audit is after 1 crore, but presumptive is available up to 2 crore. If you opt for presumptive, you will not have books of account. So, no need to get an audit done. But if you don't opt for presumptive, then after 1 crore itself, audit will become applicable. And then further, we have an amendment. This amendment was already there last year. The only change is that this was 5 crore which is increased to 10 crore. So, if your cash receipts and your cash payments, cash receipts and cash payments both are within 5% of aggregate receipts. First of all, this is not purchase or sale. This is receipt. Receipts may you can have cash sales, 
you can have receive money received from debtors you can have any loan taken you can have any sale of asset that is also money received we are talking about cash account cash book receipts and payments account we are not talking about income and expenditure account or pnl account receipts and payments account so debit side we will have receipt cash column bank column and total column that cash column should be maximum 5% up to 5% of total and credit side we will have payments cash column bank column total column the cash column should be maximum 5% both receipts and payments both receipts and payments should be within 5% cash receipts within 5% of total receipts and cash payments within 5% of total payments then tax audit will be applicable only after your turnover exceeds 10 crore to promote more and more transactions through banking channels and elimination of cash in the economy we are enhancing the limit of this to fifth uh, to 10 crore rupees if the receipts and payments both in cash are up to 5% of total and if the check is other than account pay a cross check or a bearer check that will be treated as cash only yeah? so that also has to be within the limit check other this is also an amendment check other than account pay will be treated as cash and the second amendment is this was 5 crore increase to 10 crore so this condition was already there last year last year only it was introduced it was an amendment last year they are enhancing the limit to 10 crore and here they are saying check other than account pay will be treated as cash you have to get your books of accounts audited with this we get tax audit with the this is the tax audit so for profession only one rule turn over more than 50 lakh get your audit done but for business more than one crore if presumptive taken then only after two crore and if cash receipt and payment both are within five percent then after 10 crore and check other than account pay will be treated as cash let's go ahead to the concept of presumptive taxation first provision 44 ad what is the eligibility criteria i'll take you to the eligibility criteria first and then we will come to the computation which i have given in point number one turnover has to be up to two crore rupees this will be allowed only if your turnover is up to two crore this will be allowed only to resident individual resident H of resident firm excluding llp that first place of difference between firm and llp and three people will be ineligible anybody who has specified profession we have a separate section ada for them transporter we have a separate section 44 a and anybody who is in commission agency or brokerage business these three businesses will be ineligible for 44 ad turnover up to 2 crore resident individual H of firm excluding llp and three people excluded once these conditions are satisfied what will be your pgbp this is not your income or tax liability this is your pgbp eight percent of your turnover it is the first answer but out of your total turnover any amount which is realized in your three modes account pay check account pay draft electronic mode and realized up to the due date outstanding will not be covered then realized will be covered in six percent so listen cash turnover eight percent outstanding on due date if you have not realized that payment it is still in debtor account then eight percent six will be available only if it is received in the three allowable modes up to the due date of filing return only if it is received in the three allowable modes up to the due date of filing return then it will be six percent otherwise it will be eight percent this is optional of course so if opted no need to maintain books of accounts you can always offer higher amount there is going to be no prohibition for that if you want to offer lower amount then you will have to maintain books of accounts higher amount is always allowed but you will have to maintain lower amount than maintain books of accounts we will not do any adjustment from 30 to 38 we will not do any ad less but if there is any broad forward loss that is section 72 that will be allowed but uad will not be allowed simply because loss is in 72 and this is in 32 so now you check does this come between 30 and 38 no so it is allowed does this come yes so it is not allowed so be careful this also has been tested in mcqs that broad forward loss will not be allowed but broad forward uad will be allowed there won't be any adjustment but you have to calculate wdv of all blocks mainly for capital gain purposes you are eligible only to pay last installment of advance tax only last installment that means first three not applicable 44 ad ada ad ada ad ada only last installment and once you opt for this you have to take for minimum five years but if you opt out then it will not be available for five years so once same as 115 bbf once taken take for five more and in between if you leave then not available for five more that's your 44 ad a lot of recent case study based mcqs are on these simple simple points very simple simple points but while solving students forget that one step goes wrong their final answer becomes wrong and those those case study based mcqs have in fact taken a combo there is a five question wala case study where there are five mcqs in that they tested on knowledge of ad ada ae all three together also 
let's talk about ada first of all this is available only to resident assess specified profession only cac as lawyer doctor engineer architect and with effect from ey 20 to 23 the eligibility criteria is changing till last year any resident specified profession resident specified profession was allowed but now it will be resident individual and firm excluding llp that means companies now disqualified llp is disqualified huf also disqualified huf is allowed in 44 ad not allowed in 44 ada you can expect this question huf can take 44 ad ada both or none till last year your answer was both but now your answer will be huf can take ad not allowed ada ada will be allowed only for individual and firm not being llp individual and firm not being llp 44 ada will be allowed only to two assesses that also if resident and in specified profession if the receipt is up to 50 lakh your pgbp will be 50 percent turnover ka 50 percent no eight or six direct 50 percent and all other conditions are same from five to ten till year pay only last installment that last point 11 that minimum five years ka lock-in is applicable only for 44 ad so conditions from year to year five to ten will be same which are these conditions optional you can offer higher amount lower amount than books of account no adjustment in pgbp including uad but brought forward losses will be adjusted calculate wdv of blocks and only last installment of advance tax this will be same last point is not applicable and we talk about transporters 44 a only if you have up to 10 trucks for throughout the year up to 10 trucks throughout the year so if you have 11 truck at any point of time you will be disqualified what will be your income and here they have not mentioned any other criteria only one criteria for light vehicles 7500 per month or part so one month and one day you count for two months two months and three days three months heavy vehicle where the weight of the tra truck exceeds 12 tons 12 metric tons 12 me tons and metric tons one in the same 12000 kgs then it will be thousand per ton per month so if it's 18 ton truck 18000 per month 20 ton truck 20000 per month 15 ton truck 15000 per month 12 ton then it will fall in light 7500 per month per month or part per month or part and income has to be calculated on ownership not usage i'm referring to a specific case study based mcq they have given 10 truck car details of the assessee they have given two columns date of purchase date of put to use date of purchase date of put to use the date of put to use column has to be cancelled you have to check from ownership and over there nay you have to upper round of the number of months and then multiply for light truck 7500 for heavy trucks 1000 per ton accordingly you will get your answer one more very important thing if the transporter is a firm then 40b deduction will be allowed that was also tested in that same mcq same mcq so they said it's a partnership firm you had to calculate based on this on the basis of ownership not usage and then subtract the allowable deduction of 40b that was the final answer for taxable income of the transporter in that particular mcq very easy but it takes a lot of effort and thus the mcq lectures are going to be very important for you all other conditions are same till 9 because they don't have the facility of last they have to pay all that means from 5 to 9 will be same so understand please if i talk about 44 ad ad then all the points are applicable if i talk about ada then till year last point of lock-in is not applicable and 44 ae till year because they have to pay all installments of advanced tax and there is no compulsory period of five years so points 5 6 7 8 9 will be applicable for 44 a e presumptive taxation and now we have four sections of presumptive taxation for non-resident one more thing i would like to remind you about these sections if you take this then mat is not applicable if opted then mat is not applicable first let's talk about 44 b and bba non-resident engaged in shipping business non-resident engaged in operation of aircraft in india we will take your turnover in india and on that turnover for shipping business we will apply 7.5 percent airline business 5 percent so turnover for shipping business 7.5 airline business 5 percent that will be your pgbp under the respective sections turnover ka 7.5 and 5 percent respectively but what will you take in turnover any money which is received in india irrespective of origin and destination if the payment is in india then it will be taken and any origin of journey in india if the journey starts in india then it will be taken if the payment is in india it will be taken if the journey starts in india it will be taken these two will always be taken payment in india and journey starts in india and any kind of handling detention demerit charges will also be included that total turnover ka 7.5 or 5 percent will be applied and last part if we are in 44 double b or triple b this is services related to extraction and exploration 
activities and this is turnkey project in civil construction where one person will prepare that asset civil construction asset that building that will be ready and you have to go and turn the key that means you will use that person will only prepare it you will use it so whatever you pay them 10 percent will be the pgbp both turnover into 10 percent will be pgbp so for shipping 7.5 percent of turnover for airline 5 percent of turnover for extraction and exploration activities 10 percent of turnover and for turnkey project 10 percent of turnover that's our revision of chapter pgbp i know we took very long for this more than an hour but that's pgbp after all so we have to give that respect to pgbp that's the end of pgbp pgbp chapter hereby comes to an end now with the remaining time of today's lecture i don't see that i will be able to do anything great in capital gains but at the same time i will not want to end the lecture also because if i end the lecture here then i will not be able to complete capital gain other sources clubbing set of deductions everything in one class so i will use my smartness here let's jump capital gain other sources for the time being anyways it's a revision class and anyways in class sometimes normal class also we do clubbing set of first so what we will do is with the time that we have uh, my calculation says that clubbing set of chapters will be able to do and if clubbing set of is done then understand please in the last episode we will be left with only capital gain other sources and deductions so we will go to clubbing set of chapter immediately so we are going to just uh, jump uh, capital gain and other sources that's ifos then we go ahead and finish our two chapters at least clubbing ca students expectation versus reality this clubbing is not a night club wala clubbing this clubbing is clubbing of income when income will be earned by one person it will be taxable for other person it will be clubbing only specified transactions are covered what transfer of income without transferring the asset so you own debentures you transfer the interest earned from the debentures to your any person any person huh? here the transfer is not defined you have transferred income while you continue to hold the asset then the income will be clubbed in the hands of the transferor next this time you transfer your asset only this time you transfer your asset but it's a revocable transfer whenever i will want i will take it back so once again the income will be received by the transfer but taxable for the transfer any place where you have substantial interest any business where you have substantial interest you hold 20 percent or more along with your relatives and that business is paying remuneration the word used is remuneration let me be clear interest is not covered here so you have substantial ownership that is 20 percent or more with your relative and that business is paying remuneration to your spouse for inadequate consideration your spouse does not deserve it then the excess of deserved shall be clubbed that is taxable in the hands of the transfer taxable in the hands of transfer and if both of them have substantial interest then the income will be clubbed in the hands of that spouse who has got higher income but one thing remember that if it is a deserving remuneration no clubbing only excess of the deserving remuneration will be club next if you transfer any asset to spouse without adequate consideration transfer of asset to spouse without adequate consideration then the income will be received by the spouse but taxable for the transferer subject to the conditions it has to be inadequate consideration if you take adequate consideration it is sale and you can do it to anyone there is no agreement to live apart you are living together then only clubbing will apply if you are separating and you are transferring then that transfer is not being done for the purpose of tax evasion that is done for peace of mind separate from your spouse give her asset bola ja, ja, shanti peace of mind then no clubbing if you are separating clubbing will apply only if you are living together so inadequate consideration living together transfer can be husband to wife or wife to husband a section says transfer to spouse not wife so it can be both ways obviously only individual can have wife ha, thank god individual can have wife thank god huf or company firm don't have wife that is why they can survive the relation should exist at the time of transfer and at the time of income on both occasions that should be the relation if the asset is sold by the transferee then even capital gains will be club clubbing will apply even if form of asset is changed so debenture sale proceed is invested in fixed deposit then the interest will also be clubbed clubbing will also apply on indirect transfer x is transferring to y's wife y is transferring to x is wife then also the respective income will be clubbed because it is indirect transfer clubbing will not apply only on accretion so if x gives a cow and there is pgbp income on the milk then it will be received by her but taxable for him 
But if there is any birth given to a calf, then that PGBP income will be received and taxable both by her. On this, there will be no clubbing. This is called accretion. Because of an existing asset, if you get another asset, that is called accretion. One more example, if you want, X is transferring shares. So the dividend will be received by her taxable. But if there is any accretion, that is bonus, then received and taxable both by her. And if the gifted amount is invested, if the gift is of rupees and she invests in business, so what we will do is find out the total investment in the business. In that, what is the husband proportion? In that proportion, we will apply the clubbing on the profit. So take the profit, profit into husband's investment divided by total investment in business. That much will be clubbed. But this very important, you check on the first day of the year. If the husband has given the gift in the middle of the year, then it will not be taken into consideration for that particular year. Exactly same rule applies when it is transferred to son's wife, daughter-in-law. Exactly same rule. Exactly same rule when asset is transferred to son's wife. Only point is that here you cannot have a divorce agreement to live apart. Everything else, inadequate consideration, only individual, indirect transfer, change in form of asset, capital gain, all other points are same. Last point also, invested in, used in business, invested money, proportionate clubbing on the first day of the previous previous year sometimes instead of direct transfer to spouse or sons why what i do is i transfer my asset to a trust or aop but i tell the trust to use it for the benefit of my spouse or sons wife the beneficiary of the trust is spouse or sons wife then also the income that is earned by the trust will be club and all other points again will remain same if there is any income of a minor child then it will be clubbed in the hands of parent which has got higher income before applying clubbing provision so if father has five lakh mother has 6 lakhs so we will apply clubbing over year before clubbing if parents have separated then maintaining parent if one parent is no more than surviving parent if both parents are no more be careful pay be careful here there will not be clubbing in the guardian's income clubbing means to add in my income if i am the guardian i will not add in my income i will do compliances i will file return on behalf of the minor be present pay tax i will only do the compliances i will not add in my income we will make minors computation and make the guardian do all the responsibilities compliances will be done by the guardian there will not be any clubbing provision compliances will be done by guardian child will include stepchild and adopted child but if it is an illegal child illegal marriage it will not be included there will be no clubbing if the minor has earned income through special skill or manual labor or if the minor is suffering from atu disability then there will be no clubbing in such cases and the parent will be eligible for an exemption amount clubbed or 1500 per annum per child unlimited number of children Normally in income tax, we have two children limit at a lot of places, but here there is no limit on the number of children. So amount clubbed or 1500 per annum per child, which average lower amount clubbed or 1500 per annum per child, which average lower that is going to be the applicable exemption and only the balance will be taxable. And last point, if the member of HUF is transferring his self acquired asset to HUF for inadequate consideration, inadequate is compulsory because if it is adequate, it's a sale, you can do it to anyone. Member of HUF transferring self-acquired asset to HUF, then the income will be received by the HUF but taxable for the member. That's the last section of clubbing 64.2. Other points, clubbing is compulsory even if it is lost. So everywhere we clubbed the income, in case it is lost, the loss will also be clubbed. Clubbing applies whether it is profit or it is loss. Clubbing is compulsory even if it reduces your tax liability. Even if the tax is reduced, clubbing provisions are going to be compulsory. Clubbing is compulsory even if it reduces your tax liability unlike transfer pricing which applies only if it increases if it reduces tax then transfer pricing is not applicable but here it will be compulsory and clubbing is not a head of income clubbed income will go in one of the five beds without clubbing milk profit would have gone in pgbp so in clubbing it will go in pgbp without uh, clubbing debenture interest would have gone in ifos so in clubbing also go in ifos okay so that's our chapter called clubbing of income i was aware that it's a small chapter it will get over fast same is the case of set off and carry forward of losses whenever you have losses you will want to adjust those losses step number one it will be adjusted in the same head of income any loss same head of income step number two adjust against other heads of income in the same year other heads of income and step three will be carry forward it has to be compulsorily done in the order if you have profit in the same head you cannot go to other head if you don't have profit, then you go to other head. If you have profit in the other head, you cannot carry forward. Set off is not optional. It is compulsory. If you are eligible, you have to take it. Let's do the steps one by one. Inter source. Loss from one source. Adjust against 
any other income in the same source for example one business loss another business profit one house property loss another house property profit let's go head by head salary can never have loss so no question of adjustment can loss of house property be adjusted against house property income yes and right now we are checking same head next step section 71 we will go to enter head then pgbp can we do it yes but speculation business loss like futures and options and all can be adjusted only against any speculation profit so i have share trading loss and i have commodity trading profit i can adjust but only against speculation profit speculation loss against other business not only. specified business 35 80, 14 specified businesses today only in today's class only we have done business profession it can be adjusted only against specified profit not allowed to be adjusted against other profit and other losses businesses like furniture electronic etc can be adjusted against any profit including this and this there is no restriction on speculation profit or specified profit the restriction is on only on only on speculation loss specified loss speculation loss specified loss there is no restriction on the profit what about set of under the head capital gains set of is allowed under intersource but there is restriction long term capital loss can be adjusted only against long term capital gain not allowed against short term capital gain but short term loss can be adjusted against both long term as well as short term gain so once again we can say restriction is on long term loss not on long term gain long term gain can be used for both losses short term gain can be used only for short term loss long term loss not allowed against short term gain and what about ifos if there is casual loss betting and gambling no set of no carry forward lapse so if it is profit flat 30 percent if it is loss then no set of carry forward owning and maintaining resources if you have losses only against omrh profits against others not allowed and any other loss in ifos you can adjust against any profit including this profit the restriction is on loss just like speculation loss specified loss long term loss omrh loss but not casual winning this is the only place in the chapter where there is restriction on income this income cannot be used for any set of everywhere else speculation specified long term omrh income can be used only loss has restriction but in casual winning income has restriction and of course if an income is not taxable then the for example agriculture business loss of course we will not get any set of any set of against anything so this is where we have adjusted our losses within the same head of income now let's try to adjust again supposingly we don't have profit in the same head then only we can go to other head so let's go to the other head can we take our losses to other heads if set of cannot be done under the same head then you will do against other heads salary there will be no loss can you do house property against other heads yes against any income so you can take it against salary pgbp capital gain other sources except casual winnings that restriction i already told you here house property can be adjusted against any head any source except casual winning but the maximum adjustment will be 2 lakh so house property loss against other heads maximum 2 lakh and don't forget in new regime not allowed new regime house property loss against other heads not allowed. sop though not allowed at all lop can have unlimited loss that will not be allowed against other heads then loss under pgbp can we take it to other heads yes but not speculation specified of course speculation specified inter sources also not allowed so other heads out of question we can take everywhere but not salary business loss against salary not allowed business loss against salary not allowed against house property you can take capital gain you can take ifos of course excluding casual winning let me put it like this business loss can be adjusted against any income except salary and casual winnings. except salary and casual winnings. house property loss can be adjusted against any income except casual winnings but maximum two lakh for capital loss inter head is not available only. you have to adjust capital loss only against capital gains and in that also long term only against long term and if you have any loss under ifos of course excluding casual loss because no set of carry forward and omrh because it does not have inter source also any other losses you can adjust means ifos losses can be adjusted against salary also house property pgbp capital gain everywhere so if we have a recap of the first two sections inter source and inter head salary cannot have loss house property first current year you will adjust in the same head no restriction other heads maximum 2 lakh but excluding casual winnings then carry forward in pgbp speculation only speculation specified only specified other losses against pgbp first including speculation specified then against other heads excluding salary and casual winnings then we carry forward under capital gains short term loss against long term gain short term gain both long term loss only against long term gains other heads not allowed directly carry forward in other sources casual losses no set of carry forward 
OMRH losses against OMRH profits, otherwise carry forward and other losses can be adjusted against IFOS, excluding casual winnings. OMRH included but excluding casual winnings. Other heads, no restriction. But these other losses, unfortunately, you are not allowed to carry forward. So, if you want, you should adjust in the first year itself. Carry forward is not allowed. These are the only losses where which cannot be carried forward. Of course, other than casual losses, which we know that it is not going to be carried forward. But all other losses, house property loss, all the three business speculation specified other loss, long term capital and short term capital, both losses, OMRS losses, all losses can be carried forward. But IFOS losses cannot be carried forward. Under IFOS only OMRH can be carried forward. Other losses cannot be carried forward. And once carried forward, how will you adjust one by one? House property loss carry forward up to eight years. In future, you can adjust only against house property, even if belated ROI. Don't forget two losses allowed with belated ROI. House property and UAD. House property UAD allowed in belated ROI. Speculation business loss four years carry forward only current year also it is speculation so future also speculation roi on time business speculation specified capital omrh business speculation specified capital omrh roi on time house property uad belated roi allowed that part is already done specified business loss we get unlimited carry forward but only again specified profit only if roi is filed on time other business losses we get eight years carry forward in against pgvp including speculation specified restriction is not on profit it is on loss only if ROI is filed on time. Capital losses, 8 years carry forward, only capital gains in that also long term against long term ROI on time. OMRH losses, 4 years carry forward, only OMRH profits, only ROI on time. And unabsorbed depreciation is the only loss which we can carry forward without any time limit and it can get adjusted against anything except to salary and casual winnings because it's a part of business, it will not be allowed. Except salary and casual winnings, it will be adjusted. Even if you file a belated ROI, it will be adjusted and just to give you a small piece of information you have incurred capital expenditure on scientific research and you have incurred capital expenditure on family planning which is allowed only to companies today's lecture only we did pgbp revision if they are unabsorbed if you don't have current year sufficient profits then they will be treated as par with your unabsorbed depreciation Capital expenditure on scientific research and family planning will be treated at par with UAD and thus this, this system will apply for scientific research and family planning. Carry forward without any time limit even if related ROI and adjust against any income including casual win excluding casual winnings and salary. In case of discontinuance of business, the unadjusted losses you other than speculation if you stop your business for example any normal business we stop. So, if there is any loss of the year of discontinuance that can be adjusted against any recovery. Supposingly, I stop my business. After 20 years, there is bad debts recovered. That is taxable. Bad debts recovered is taxable even after 20 years. So, any loss of the year of discontinuance, the year in which I discontinued my business, that loss, even if I have suffered losses for 4 or 5 years, then I shut down my business. But only of the year of discontinuance, I will be allowed even if I receive after 8 years except speculation you can do it for all. Loss carry forward can be done only by that assessee who suffered the loss. If you suffer the loss, you get carry forward. I suffer the loss, I get carry forward. I suffer loss, I will not give carry forward to my neighbor's wife even if we have lot of love and affection between each other. Whoever suffers the loss is eligible for carry forward except if it is a business reorganization like amalgamation, demerger, then it can be carried forward. If it is a case of inheritance, then Father's business inherited by son can be carried forward and of course, business income of wife or minor child is clubbed, then the loss also will be clubbed. In case of clubbing, whether positive or negative, clubbing is going to be applicable. So, with this, we complete our house property, PGBP, clubbing and set off. Some are like, sir, 15 bis mint have finished deductions also. <laughs> Actually, good idea. Shall we? Chal chod. Anyways, we will have to do one more episode episode 9 will be our last episode in that we will finish capital gain other sources and deductions only three chapters are left as far as the three additional chapters of new syllabus are concerned BEPS, tax treaties and model tax conventions i know there are a few students who have shifted from old course to new course and these three are their extra chapters dt otherwise is fully same in old and new these three are extra chapters so how you have to go about those three i will tell you at the end of the revision class in episode 9 when we will say tata bye bye to revision come amendment at that time i will cover up that for you so don't worry about that we'll see in the we'll meet tomorrow in the 
last episode of revision and ladies and gentlemen then comes tidding tidding mcq season 3 will start day after tomorrow so thank you for watching have a nice time have a good night happy studying bye bye shabba care good night take care